So I'm now running with Cubase 5.5, the recent update, and it's had a real visual overhaul. You can see here, I've customized the color scheme to give it a nice kind of brown tint, give it a different flavor to what it used to be. The icons along the top, much improved now. This is running on the Mac and it really feels like a Mac application. So it's a really recommended upgrade. It's a free download if you've got the actual Cubase 5 application. So just going to do a video here to demonstrate a concept some people have a difficulty with. And that's the difference between instrument tracks and then MIDI tracks that are actually rooted to an instrument inside this window here okay there's a key difference now if you're actually working on stuff and you don't need anything to have separate outputs so say for example you're working with Halley on one so you're just loading up a piano the best type of track to use is the instrument track the instrument track is combined MIDI and audio data on one track it's very tidy you don't have to worry about dealing with automation all over the place up and down the screen so if all you're running with is a piano you're better off using an instrument track all it has is a single output so have a listen here's a piano this is running on Halion 1, the old vinyl piano. I'm using a MIDI insert, the chorda, to create the chord transposition. I only input one note each time. So that's a really nice plugin in Cubase. Let's come down to the next instrument, bass line. So this is coming from Halion 1, DX100 bass, so classic Yamaha FM bass. So this one here, this is coming out on its own output because it's its own separate device. So we've got two devices, each with our own stereo output. Let's have a look at the mixer. So you can see here now, let me take away these instruments. We've got the bass line on its own output, chords on its own output. This is literally two instruments connected directly into the mixer. So I've also got some beats here. You can see this, let's come and bring this on. The beats are coming from battery. These are isolated into their own individual outputs. The bass drum, the snare, snare two, hats, and snare three. If I had loaded up a kit into battery on an instrument track, I would not be able to have the multiple outputs. This is the key, key difference. If I open up the instance of battery, you can see down here at the bottom right hand side that some of these sounds have got their own outputs allocated. So there we go. You can turn on the ability of the multiple outputs by coming into the VST Instruments window and clicking this very small icon here. This is where you activate the outputs. I didn't activate all of them because there was no need for me to do that. So I've just turned on what I needed. So each time you do this, watch the mixer next to snare three. I've created a new channel, so you can do this, you can turn on more. So if you come across more sounds you want to add into the production, you can do that. So that could, for example, be a shaker, maybe a woodblock or something, a percussive element. So in terms of the actual project window here, let me just show you. The automation for the outputs of these individual drum sounds would be carried out on these tracks here. So this is where you'd see the data. So if I recorded any automation changes, you'd see them down here. So they're in a folder underneath. The instrument tracks don't have folders down the bottom. There's no need to because the automation data is written onto the same track. Okay, so hopefully that will have cleared things up. Instrument tracks, I would suggest are for your single sounds. So things like pianos, strings, brass, synth basses, synth leads. Each time just load up an instrument track. If you're running with something that's multi-output like battery, contact, you know, multi timbrel as well, so it can receive on the individual MIDI channels up to 16 separately. Go for the MIDI track here, connected into the actual device inside the device VST Instruments window.